everybody, it's Melissa or The Brain and today is Fun Facts Friday um, which you can find every third week of the month and this Fun Fact Friday we're going to talk about common ingredients in eyeliner and I know you're probably like why do I even need to know the ingredients in eyeliner? Is it even important? Is it even like a thing that I need to look up and research? But personally, I think it's better off knowing the kind of ingredients that you'd be using on your face, especially around your eye area because the skin in your eye area is really sensitive. And you never know, some ingredients have larger potentials to create allergic reactions or um, can make someone be more sensitive to them. I know a lot of you go for the whole trial and error thing and I do that too but I like to make sure that when I'm purchasing something firsthand, especially if it's something from Sephora or something uh, of a high-end brand, that I know that the ingredients at least kind of play a little bit in my favor when I buy them. So let's just get started. A uh, majority of the things that I talk about today come from cosmeticsinfo.org which is a very very uh, resourceful website. Um, I'm not affiliated with them but I often go to their website because they have a lot of information about different types of common chemicals that may be in your cosmetics. The list that I'm giving out to you guys comes is basically um, a basis of their list. I basically worked off of their common ingredients in eyeliner list and I researched what they had on their website and then I did a little bit of digging on my own as well. And also if you go to, if you know the brand Simple, they have a website and they have a research database there where you can type in any ingredient and it would give in a uh, kind of like a function for the um, ingredient that you chose to research. I just want to put a disclaimer that I'm not an expert or a chemist, like I don't have a degree on this stuff. This is just something that I like researching for fun and um, that I thought would be cool to spread awareness to you guys so that you guys can be aware of the ingredients that you're using. So common ingredients in eyeliner. I'm going to be talking about the 12 different types of common ingredients in eyeliner based off of cosmeticsinfo.org. So first product that I would like to talk about is called dimethicone. Dimethicone is a silicone based polymer with two methyl groups. It's not really something you need to know if you're looking for a function, but it's just something really interesting to think about. There's lots of variations and it might be hard to find that your eyeliner is has dimethicone in it because it's often mixed with other things. And then when you look for it in the ingredients label, it will be like some next thing. So as long as you find the term dimethicone, it's most likely that these purposes that I'm about to say apply to that eyeliner. Dimethicone is a very interesting chemical because I found that it was used for a lot of different products. So it can be used for moisturizer, face wash, foundation, eyeliner, and much more which I thought was really, really interesting. If you guys want me to do a more in-depth kind of thing with dimethicone about its different uses and different purposes, then I can totally do that for you guys. Um, just let me know in the comment box below or you can email it to us at beautylin.brainmill at gmail.com. I don't even know if people use email like off of YouTube. Anyways, so dimethicone can be used as a skin protectant, meaning that it can protect uh, injured or exposed skin from annoying or harmful stimuli. And I'm not exactly sure if that's the exact purpose for it in eyeliner, but I know it's possible that it could be the purpose for it in eyeliner. Um, it could be that um, dimethicone or a variation of dimethicone is used to prevent allergic reactions or oversensitivity of your eye area for the product that you're using or for the product that has that variation of dimethicone. Um, another function of dimethicone is that it's a skin conditioning agent. Um, Dimethicone is known as an emollient 
and uh, it's used as a lubricant so it glides on your skin better and it will give it that soft and smooth appearance so dimethicone is kind of an indication that the eyeliner is probably going to be super bomb on your skin but it can kind of be bad and I've read some blogs about it if you search up why is dimethicone bad on Google you'll see a lot of blogs about people talking about why dimethicone can be harmful for you and they're basically saying that because it has the ability to form a barrier that if you don't properly wash your face it, the dirt can just get trapped in there and then you'll have a reaction or a breakout. That's why some people say that using a product that has dimethicone can be very harmful because it can cause breakouts. But my thing is, um, all these ingredients that I'm mentioning are FDA approved and they don't actually guarantee the fact that you'll break out. And people are saying that for sure, like if you use dimethicone, you'll break out. But my thing is, I feel like because it's only forming a barrier, I feel like as long as your skin is properly cleansed and properly moisturized and then you put um, that product with the dimethicone in it, then I think you'll be fine um, just because you're not trapping any dirt particles underneath. I mean, this applies to every single type of makeup out there, whether there's dimethicone in it or not. You should always apply makeup with a clean, fresh face because applying makeup without a clean, fresh face will always result in breakouts but I guess people are more prone to saying that dimethicone has it because it's known to form that barrier um, anyways propylene glycol is an organic alcohol and it has it does a lot of things it attracts water um, and in this way it acts as a moisturizer so it'll keep your skin underneath that eyeliner properly moisturized. Because it's properly moisturized, there's less of a chance the eyeliner would flake off your eye. So it's very good that propylene glycol is in your eyeliner because it would keep that portion of your eye moisturized and it would reduce the flaking capacity of that eyeliner. Another purpose for propylene glycol is that it controls viscosity. Viscosity is just another long way to say how thick it is. So it controls how thick your eyeliner is. It also stabilizes the formulations. So it kind of balances everything out in the formula. Number three, the third common most ingredient in eyeliner is called polysorbate 20. And uh, basically polysorbate 20 is just a yeast solvent. If you guys don't know what a solvent is, uh, it's like water. When you put sugar into water, that sugar in the water is a solution and the water would be the solvent. You put other chemicals into solvents to create a solution basically and that's what polysorbate 20 is. Um, and because it is a solvent, it allows all the other chemicals to properly mix together. The fourth most common ingredient in eyeliner is called alcohol denat. And you're probably like, what? But um, alcohol denat is just a really long way, really, really, really random way of saying ethanol or ethyl alcohol. And I'm sure you guys have heard of ethanol before. It's a very, very common alcohol to use. Alcohol denat is basically used as a solvent, just like polysorbate 20. And it also decreases the viscosity. So we talked about viscosity. So this basically just makes it more liquidy. And also, it, uh, it acts as a cosmetic astringent. So it just contracts the skin. The fifth most common ingredient in eyeliner is called magnesium silicate. Magnesium silicate um, controls viscosity. It also controls binding, so the binding of chemical to chemical within the formula. It also acts in, as an absorbent and um, it dilutes slash increases the volume of the product. So in this way, Magnesium silicate acts as a bulking agent, bulking because it increases the volume of. Um, it also acts as a colorant and um, a deodorant agent. Deodorant agent means that the product that has the magnesium silicate in it won't smell as chemically 
because um, it kind of neutralizes the odors of the chemicals. Um, it acts as an opacifying agent, so it controls how opaque your eyeliner is. Um, it's a slip modifier, so it controls how easy the eyeliner will glide onto your skin. And it's a suspending agent that's non-surfactant. I know that this is just a very quick way of saying it, but magnesium silicate has lots of purposes. And if you guys would love to read about it, I'll just leave all my references down below in the description box so you guys can read about it. But for now, let's move on. The sixth most common ingredient in eyeliner is glycerin. Glycerin is a humectant. It just slows the process of your skin losing moisture. Um, and glycerin is a sugar alcohol. Glycerin in your eyeliner, very, very good, very, very, very good because the area that you put the eyeliner on will remain kind of supple and moisturized throughout the day so it doesn't flake off. Um, the seventh most common ingredient in eyeliner is a carbomer. Um, and it's emulsion stabilizing, big word. Um, emulsion stabilizing. It controls viscosity and a carbomer is gel forming. I guess you would find carbomer in eyeliner of a more gel texture. Um, and I know that's really big right now, like the Bobbi Brown gel liner and I think it was the Maybelline gel liner. Um, so I, I would think that carbomer would be in the thicker gel types of eyeliners out there. And it basically suspends the product. I would say that carbomer neutral product because it doesn't do anything uh, beneficial really to your skin, but it doesn't do anything bad. It's just something that the chemical formula needs to kind of bring everything together. If you find carbomer in your eyeliner, it's not really something to worry about. The ammonium or NH4 acrylates copolymer. Really, really long way to say it's acrylic acid. Um, and basically this just acts as an adhesive um, so finding acrylic acid would be really beneficial to find in your eyeliner because the eyeliner is more um, long-lasting other purposes for acrylic acid in your eyeliner would be an absorbent a binder emulsion stabilizer film former a non-surfactant and it's also viscosity increasing. If you're a little bit confused, cosmeticsinfo.org has a beautiful, beautiful glossary that you can look up and it will just explain it. Um, but basically, majority of its purposes are very, very neutral. Um, the only thing is that an eyeliner with this ingredient in it would be kind of thicker, but it would also be more long-lasting. You're looking at the creamy eyeliners, the thicker eyeliners, those would most likely have acrylic acid in them. The ninth most common product in eyeliner is called PEG-6 Sorbitan Oleate, and that's just a solvent. And um, the tenth most common ingredient is mineral oil. And this is just an emollient, so just like dimethicone, it helps give that soft and smooth appearance. And mineral oil also acts as a solvent. The 11th most common product in eyeliner is just fragrance. So some companies actually like their ingredients to smell a bit. Um, just be aware that fragrance in eyeliners have the potential to cause more uh, sensitivity. And the last and final one is just colorants. So that is self-explanatory. It just gives the color to the eyeliner itself. So that's the end of my video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please comment down below. Again, all my references are in the description box below as well. And uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. If I said something wrong, please let me know again so I can correct myself. Next week is our Friday favorite. It's always on the fourth week of the month and both me and Linda say what our favorite items were for that month. So be excited for that as well. And um, see you guys soon.